Hello Year 9s and welcome back to Math and Magic. In today's lesson I'm actually going to go through a quick summary of what we've looked at in this topic of indices and certs. There's no um, actual new content we're, being, we're learning, we're just doing a quick recap of what we've looked at in this topic. So here in this video I'm going to go through everything that we've looked at in this particular topic. So let's first start off what we talked about at the beginning of this topic. We talked about what index notation was. So we talked about what index form was and what expanded form was. So this was in this, was in, this in the first lesson of the topic. Index form was just a way of writing repeated multiplication. And so here, if we saw an, if we saw something like a to the power um, m, that just meant that I was multiplying a on itself. So a times a times a times all again and again and again m times so I was doing this uh, m m times and so here the this one this guy on the left is our index form so this is index form and when we write it out in this in repeated this multiple in repeated multiplication this was our expanded form The other thing that we noted was that when you have numbers that are being raised in written in index form, you can actually write it in expanded form, but you could also evaluate what it was. So for example, if I had two to the power four, that's just two times two times two times two, because the base is two, which is why I've got all these twos here. And the power or the index is four. And so I do it one, two, three, four, four times. But because this is a number that we can actually, we know, this can actually be written as 16 because two times two times two times two is just 16. We also talked about in that first lesson uh, about, we talked about prime factorization and prime factorization was a way of writing a number uh, as a product of uh, prime factors. And so the way that we did this was, for example, we drew up a product tree. And so here I have, uh, what's it called? I have, for example, if I had 72, I just wanted to write this as a product or a multiplication of prime numbers. And so we could split this down into different mul into multiplications. So here I could be like, okay, 72 is just two times 36. And I just repeat this process of splitting down my numbers. So two can't get divided any further. 36, we can actually split that up again. That is, um, I could do uh, 3 times 12, for example. 3, oh, actually, I'll write it in the opposite direction. So 12 times 3, okay, cool. And then 12 can be split down even further. That's just going to be 6 times 2. And 6 can be written as uh, 3 times 2. And so here we wrote our product tree, uh, factor tree, I mean. And then we just looked at the bottom bit. And so that told me, this bottom bit tells me that 72 is just 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. By just reading off all those bottom numbers, I started from bottom and moved up. And we could write this in index form. I've got 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 2 to the power 3 times 3 to the power 2. So there was 3, uh, so if you have a look at my 2s, there were 3 of them, and so I wrote 2 to the power 3. And if you have a look at my 3s, I have 2 of them, so that's 3 to the power 2. So that's what we looked at in our first lesson when we talk, started talking about index form and prime factorization. Then for the for the next for the main chunk of this topic, we talked about a few few things called index laws. Index laws were patterns that we noticed patterns when uh, indices you know, uh, operations are applied on indices. Let me say that operations are applied on indices. And so we went through a whole bunch of index laws um, that, and we went through how to simplify and expand um, uh, expressions with index laws. So for example, we talked about the index law for multiplication. So when we have two terms, two indices with the same base, so a to the power m, for example, times a to the power n, when we multiplied indices together with the same base, we added the power. So here this became a to the power uh, m plus n. 
So when we multiply indices, we add the powers. So for example, if you saw uh, 6x cubed times 3x squared, well, we could deal with the numbers separately. So that was 18 times x to the power. Well, when I add the powers together, 3 and 2, that just becomes 5. So we went through simplifying expressions using um, this multiplication law. The other one that was connected to that was division. So division is just the opposite of multiplication. And so if I am dividing two terms with the same base, so a to the power n, that just meant I subtracted the power. So here this becomes a to the power m minus n. And so for example, we um, also, oh, the other thing that we also noted was that division could also be written as a fraction as well. So for example, I'll just make a note here. We could also write this as a to the power m over a to the power n. So division was just the same as writing a fraction here in this case. Uh, and so we went through an example such as uh, y to the power 14 divided by y to the power 7. And so when we are dividing, um, when we are dividing, um, dividing indices, we subtract the power. So 14 minus 7 is 7. So we had y to the power 7. The next index law that we took, looked, looked at was a power of a power. And this is when we usually have brackets and we have a term, an indice inside. So a to the power m for example, and we are raising that whole bracket to another power, so to the power n, for example. And so when you do that, you multiply the indices. So here we get a to the power m times n, or we just wrote that as mn. So m times n is just mn. And so for example, we could have x to the power 2 to the power 3, and that gave me x to the power, well, 2 times 3 is 6, and so I get x to the power 6 there. Then we also looked at the power law for multiplication. So we applied this power law to multiplying terms. So here, if I have two uh, terms inside my bracket, so let's say I had uh, uh, A and B. Oh, let me write that in a different color that looks a little bit different. A and B, and I was raising that to a power M. What that meant was that I applied that power to each one of those terms individually. So this became a to the power m times b to the power m. And so for example, we looked at something like 2x to the power 2 to the power 3. And so that power 3 that's on the outside, that needs to be applied to both the 2 and also the x squared. And so that gave me 2 to the power 3 times x to the power x squared to the power 3. And so this became 2 to the power 3 is actually a number we could get, which was 8. And x squared to the power 3, just like we did in the previous bit, was just would just become x to the power 6. Okay. We also did it for division, and we noticed that when we divide two terms, so if we had uh, a to a over b, and we raise that to a power m, well, that just gave me the same thing as above, but instead of multiplying them together, I divided them. So here I got a to the power m divided by b to the power m. And so an example of this was if we got x to the power 4 over y, and that's all to the power 5, well then I just raised that power 5 to both the x to the power 4 and the y separately. So this becomes uh, x to the power when uh, 4 to the power 5 over y to the power 5. And just like we did in, uh, in the power of a power, this becomes x to the power 20 over y to the power 5. Okay. The next one that we talked about was the next index law was the zero index law. So if we ever raise a term to the power zero, no matter what it is, it becomes one. So a zero index just means we have a power, uh, we get a one. And so for example, we went through an example like this, five X to the power zero plus five X to the, all to the power zero. And we noted the other thing that we had to note was that we had to only apply that power zero to the terms it was connected to. So here in the first term, this power zero is only connected to the x, but in the second term, that power zero is applying to the whole bracket. So it's applying to the whole five x. So this becomes five times one because it's only applying to the x in the first term. But in the second term, because it's applying to the whole term, it becomes one altogether. So this gives me six. Okay. 
The next one was negative index indices. And when we saw negative indices, that told me I had to take the reciprocal. So here, negative indices, if I have uh, a to the power of uh, negative, negative m, that just meant that I wrote it as a reciprocal. So one over a to the power m, one over a to the power m. And so for example, we went through stuff like one over, oh, not one over, x to the power of negative two, which would give me one over x squared. And then the final index law that we looked at was fractional indices. So here, if I have a to the power um, a fraction, so one over m, one over m, that just meant I took the mth root. And so we went through what an in, a third was, and we noticed that here we just take the root of our particular number. So here, and, and the mth root of a. And so we went through an example such as um, x to the power of third, which would give me the third root or the cube root of x. Okay, that was our index laws. And for the big chunk of this topic, we actually went through index laws and actually applying our index laws. The next part that we looked at was we looked, talked about thirds. Now thirds were, so a third was an irrational number written with a square, with a root symbol. So irrational numbers written with roots. And so what we noticed was that we could actually do operations with our thirds um, just like we would normally would with algebra. So for example, when we add and subtract thirds, we were collecting like thirds. So for example, if we had uh, square root five, oh, root five plus two root three plus six root five, well, we had uh, five, root five and this root five were like terms. So we could only combine those two like terms. So here we would get seven root five plus, and the two root three doesn't have anything that's like two. So we have to just leave it alone like that. Then we also talked about uh, multiplying and dividing with thirds. And so when we multiplied and divided with thirds, we multiplied or divided the stuff in numbers inside the thirds. So for example, we did, for example, uh, square root 5 times square root 3, or root 5 times root 3, when I'm multiplying thirds, I multiply the numbers inside. So here this became root 15. Or we also did something like root 10 divided by root 5. And so here when we divide, we just divided the numbers inside our root. And so this became root 10 over 5. 10 divided by 5 was 2, so we get square root, root 2. So this is our operation with thirds that we looked at after we looked at our index laws because it connected with that last section of fractional indices. The next thing that we talked about was scientific notation. And we just looked at this in the last two lessons. So with scientific notation, scientific notation looks like this. A times 10 to the power m, where a was a number between 1 and uh, 10. And so uh, that was the measurement that we had. And m was the power or magnitude. So here it tells me how large that number is. And so here we noticed that if the number was positive, it was a very big number. But if it's negative, it was a small number. And so we were able to actually write numbers using scientific notation. Uh, and, the and then additionally, what we added on was we talked about significant figures in the last lesson. And so significant figures were the numbers that we counted from the left to right, starting from our first non-zero number. So for example, if I had, um, uh, so, oh, actually, before I do that, I'll talk about scientific notation. So here with scientific notation, we talked about how numbers could be like, for example, 5.6 times 10 to the power 6. And so that was just a scientific, a short way of writing uh, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, uh, because we did, uh, we went and did, oh, actually, let me do this properly. Try this again. 
we wrote down our number 5.6 and because it's times 10 to the power 6 it's a positive number is a positive power so we moved a decimal point uh, because it's big we moved a decimal point to the right so we moved this point one two three four five six and whenever we see a loop we just write a zero above it and so here this number was five six one two three four five and we also did oh, if I can draw we did other examples where we had a negative power of 10 so for example if I had uh, 7.21 times 10 to the power negative 7 and so that what I did was I wrote my number 7.21 and because it was negative I had to move it to the left so here I move it to the left seven times one two three four five six seven and put a decimal point there and then I just put zeros all above those points so here oh, zero 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 and so this number became point zero point zero 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 seven two one and had zero out the front so then we also looked at writing it with scientific notation uh, significant figures but I'll leave that um, off here so that was just a quick summary of what we looked at in this topic of indices and thirds just to help you out if you're not sure about any particular part in this topic if you're not sure as well, you can go back to the videos that we um, that I've posted on each one of these individual sections uh, and have a look at how we actually, uh, at a few further examples if you're not sure how to answer particular questions. So that's it for today's summary. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to message me or email me. Bye.